Welcome back to Horrors Worldwide. Today, I'm going to explain a horror thriller film called His House, released in 2020. Spoilers ahead! Watch out and stay safe. Bol and Rial are refugees fleeing with their daughter Niagok from war-torn South Sudan. We see Bol carrying his daughter Niagok, clutching a blonde baby doll, weakly shuffling across barren land. Bol's wife Rial tells Niagok that she will protect her as the truck roars to life. Their journey continues onto the stormy waters on an overcrowded motorboat, along with fellow refugees. Suddenly, they hear a loud noise from the boat, and the engine dies. Although the couple survives the treacherous crossing, Niagok and many others do not. Bull then wakes up some time later in a facility in England and sees Riel sitting next to him. Having escaped their war-torn country, they are now refugees. They meet a council and the main man congratulates them as they are being released from detention, but clarifies that they are considered asylum seekers and are not proper citizens yet. And until then, they will have to abide by strict rules, like weekly check-ins and are not allowed to work. The man also warns them if they fail to stick to the conditions, then they may face deportation. Then the government assigns them a shabby house with peeling walls and dismal furnishings on the outskirts of London. The couple meets their caseworker, Mark, and he hands them a box of supplies and shows off the place. As they enter the house, they notice some electrical issues with the lighting, and the place is definitely in need of some cleaning up. After Max leaves the house, Bull sits on the bed, getting teary-eyed and whispering, and overwhelmed that they made it and to their new life. That night, Bull hears a female humming, which sounds like it's coming from inside the walls, and another loud bang sends him into a PTSD-fueled panic. Believing it has the effect of their journey in the past, Bull covers his ears to calm his nerves, until the screaming fades away. But the sound from the wall didn't stop. As he gets close to the wall, a loud thump sound startles him. Then he hears a garbled voice. Bull crouches down and peers into a hole in the wall. He feels around inside, and Niagok briefly appears behind him. A crow flies out of the hole and flies off. The next morning, Bull is already hard at work fixing the place up. After that, he goes out into the street, intending to make some new friends. Bull isn't even sure where in Britain they actually are. On his way home, some locals invite him to their church to watch a soccer game. Bull learns the British soccer chants and sings to root for the home team. Later that night, Bull talks to his wife about his experience with new people, and she doesn't look very amused by Bull's attempt to fit in. Bull awoke again that night to more thumps from the walls and sounds like footsteps from coming upstairs. He goes to investigate but sees nothing out of the ordinary, beyond a light on in the main room. The wallpaper then peels off exposing a gnarled black surface behind it and covering another hole. He grips a wire of some kind and then starts pulling it out. In that process, he accidentally knocks the entire place's power out. A strange figure appears behind him. Without noticing it, Bull keeps pulling for quite some time, and the wire appears to be covered in seaweed. And finally reaching the end, it is attached to Niagok's doll. This sends him into peeling out the entire wallpaper, which reveals more hollow spots in the wall. When Rial wakes up, she finds Bull gone and the ground littered with wallpaper. As she cleans up, she sees a vision of their escape from South Sudan. Rial too believes the reason for all those strange visions is fueled by the journey they had to England. Hence, Rial decides to leave the house for the first time by herself and takes a walk to the nearby hospital. She makes it to the clinic and the woman in the clinic is nice with her. She even compliments Rial's necklace, which Rial got from her daughter. The woman notices the marks on her body and Rial explains the story behind all those markings. This conversation leads to the woman asking about Niaga. Rial simply says they lost her on the journey to Britain. Rial buys some more groceries and returns home. She hears a voice whisper, come, emanate from within the walls. She watches as a peach obeys the voice's command, rolling across the floor and into the hole in the wall. Many voices then begin speaking to her. When Bull returns home, he finds Rial has made a traditional meal and sets it out on a rug, as they used to eat in Africa. Bull forces Rial to use silverware, rather than using her hands while eating, and also says they must start eating at the table so that they can fit in. As Bull starts eating, she tells him the story of a poor man in her village who accidentally stole from a witch by the river. When the thief built his home, the witch moved in with him and haunted him. Rial believes that a witch has followed them, and if they repay their debt, the witch will bring Niagok back to them. However, it is not immediately clear what the debt is that they need to repay. She then tells Bull that she has seen the ghosts in their home. Bull denies seeing the ghosts. Rial calls him a liar and says that they must repay their debt to break the curse. 
That night, Bol again hears voices. He begins carving open the walls. As he does, he hears African music and voices. He sees many ghosts throughout the house. Bol is then attacked by Nyagak wearing a tribal mask. He insists that they are cursed through one of the objects from their home country. Bol collects all of the clothes and goods they brought from Africa and lights them on fire. He sees the necklace Riel made out of Nyagak's beads and rips it off her neck. Riel begs him not to destroy her links to her home. He tosses the necklace into the fire anyway. The next day, Bull goes to the mall and buys Western-style clothes. When he returns home, he repairs all the wiring in the house. As he finishes the work, he finds Rial talking to an unseen presence. She is discussing returning home to South Sudan. Bull angrily sets the table for dinner and tells Rial she must integrate into the British community. She responds that the ghosts have promised that if she complies with their wishes, they will reunite her with Niagak. Trying to defuse the situation, Bull grabs her hand, but she pulls her hand back and starts eating with her fingers. As they both continue eating, Rial is suddenly gone. There's a crumbling wall behind Bull, and he finds himself back in the middle of the sea. Soon he realizes he has been transported inside a vision. Alone at sea, watery corpses rise from the water and approach him. The vision ends, but he is still attacked by the ghosts. They disappear whenever he turns on the lights and he struggles to light up his entire house. The ghosts scream out that they can't breathe, and Niagak yells that she can't swim. Once all the lights are on, Bull sees the ghost crawling inside the walls. Realizing the truth that these ghosts are ruining his new life, he hammers away at the wall over and over, making many more holes and pretty much destroying the entire wall in frustration. He goes to Mark and requests new accommodation under the guise that their unit is infested with rats, and Bull struggles very hard to convince him. At last, Mark agrees to support and inform him about the inspection of the house before moving out. When Mark discovers the damage done to the walls, he decides to report that to the officials. Understanding the fact that the report would spoil their chance of staying in the UK, Bull tells Mark that he would repair the house by himself. When Mark leaves, Bull and Riel fight with each other over where they belong. Bull refuses to go back to Africa, and knocks all of the door and window handles off so that he and Riel can't leave. He then lights a candle and asks the ghost to talk with him. He is approached by a witch calling itself the Butcher. The witch says that it will reunite Nyagok with Rial so long as Bull sacrifices himself to repay his debts. Bull refuses and realizes that the witch cannot directly harm him. Meanwhile, Rial reattaches a window handle and crawls out of the home. She ends up in a vision where she is back in South Sudan. She greets all of her friends in a tearful reunion. However, Rial is then approached by the witch. The witch forces Rial to remember the truth of her past. Rial and Bull survive an attack by one of the warning tribes that left most of their friends and family dead. They, along with other refugees, flee to a bus to be taken out of the war zone. Rial and Bull are denied entry onto the bus as the workers are prioritizing the evacuation of families with children. Bull sees Nyagok in the crowd and grabs her, claiming that Nyagok is their child. They are led on the bus just before it departs. Nyagok's real mother sees Nyagok on the bus and pursues it, screaming out for her daughter. The bus does not stop, and the mother is left behind. The couple with Nyagok is then placed on a boat to Britain. However, it capsizes, and everyone begins drowning. Bull is one of the few people who can swim. He grabs Rial and swims with her to the rescuers, leaving Nyagok to drown. The witch promises to reunite Nyagok with Rial if Bull sacrifices himself to the witch. Having accepted what they did, Bull decides to repay the debt to the witch. Bull starts to let the witch into his skin, and Nyagok enters the room and returns to Rial. As the witch tries to get into Bull's body, Rial chooses to save Bull instead of accepting her alternate reality by slitting the witch's throat. Later, Mark comes to inspect the house to find it repaired. Bull and Rial tell him they have chosen to stay and make it their new home. The couple also says Rial killed the witch that haunted them, which Mark finds funny. We see a vision of the couple in the doorway with other unknown immigrants, who look into another doorway full of people left behind. Then we see the couple standing in the doorway of their new home, with a peaceful look in their eyes.